I'm Pablo Cholset, director of the International Film Series at CU Boulder, and... I'm Sabrina Negri, assistant professor in cinema studies here at CU Boulder. Hi. And we just finished watching a very Nightmare nice, Alley. a very nice 35 millimeter print of Nightmare Alley from 1947, directed by Edmund Golding. Um, and I've seen it before, but Sabrina, this was your first time. My first time, yeah. and I didn't want to know anything about it before, Good. so I didn't look uh, into any information. First thing I want to say, what a print. It was a it's beautiful. A, it's a beautiful, a little yes. dirty on the, uh, uh, the the tails and ends of the reels. But, but that is normal. That yeah. always happens. But otherwise, you know? this was a, a really, really, really nice print. Yeah, so, very few scratches. I would yeah. say maybe I like it a bit, you know, deeper in terms of uh, density of blacks. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this is personal taste. Uh, beautiful print, like. So, so mm -hmm. if you're coming to the International Film you Series yes. to watch this on Monday, um, you're in for a treat. Absolutely. Uh, do you have any other thoughts that come to mind? Well, I mean, it's really hard for me to talk about a film right after I watch it. I need some time to process sure. it, especially if it's the first time I see it. Yep. But I will see a few things. Well, this is a film noir, of yep. course. And on the one hand, it's a very uh, traditional film noir. It has a lot of the film noir themes, like the theme of fate yep. uh, that runs across the entire film very overtly. The theme of the tarot cards that comes up a mm -hmm. couple of times throughout the film, of course, is the embodiment of that. And that is one of the um, themes that run across the entire genre throughout the 1940s and 50s. Yep. But other than that, it's a very unusual film noir. Well, because it has a, a very uh, uh, distinct horror element. It does, yeah, but also in terms of... Ghosts and supernatural, and mm -hmm. by the way, what about that scene when the woman's on the electric chair and the, the sheriff comes oh, by, God. and it's it's so almost good. a little it's a little bit like uh, Bride of Frankenstein, totally right? Bride just uh, of Frankenstein. as the electricity is mm -hmm. is just rippling through her fingers, mm -hmm. and the sheriff is clearly having uh, second thoughts about um, what he stepped into. Uh, it's riveting, and to think that this came out back in 1947, uh, and I also think it's very. Uh, I can see exactly why Guillermo del Toro would be interested. Absolutely, yeah, that's what I was thinking this. about the entire time. Yeah, so yeah. Guillermo del Toro, who uh, IFS customers will know is the director of Kronos, Devil's Backbone, uh, Pan's Labyrinth, uh, The Shape of Water, of course. He's actually making, as we speak, in production for a remake of Nightmare Alley. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a little cool uh, local connection insofar as um, uh, somebody that I went to school with here at Film Studies has a character role within the film. Oh, Dean, really? Dean, Dean Backer, I'm probably mispronouncing his name, he was an actor in uh, Alfred Packer, the musical, later known as Cannibal the Musical. He worked with Trey <laughs> Parker and Matt Stone. Cool. So we'll get to see him in this movie with, um, uh, and it's got uh, Willem Dafoe. As oh, well. really? I didn't yeah. know that. I mean, I knew um, that Toro was uh, making a remake, but I didn't look into oh, the, it. The, so the, I didn't the, know. the cast for this remake is going to be phenomenal, mm -hmm. and I can't wait to see what uh, Del Toro does with all of the. Uh, one of the other things that's kind of unusual, I think, about Nightmare Alley, a bit longer yeah. than other noirs. It's. Um, and uh, also it had a slightly bigger budget, I think, than most noirs. Yeah, well, what I, what I found unusual, well, I don't want to say too much about sure. the plot, of course, but it's the variety of settings yeah. I found really unusual. Because we think of noir as, you know, an urban genre. Yeah, dark alleys. Exactly, and, the uh, city. And you have some of that. And you have a beautiful 1947 Chicago. And if you know Chicago at all, sure. you recognize That's the right. You just got back from Chicago, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't go to State Street where some of the scenes are right. shot. but. Um, yeah, if you're familiar a little bit with Chicago, you will recognize it. Yeah. And it's really charming to see Chicago in the 40s. Uh, so variety of settings, but also the role of the femme fatale is very unusual. It's more of an well, homme there's, fatale. There's several you know? femme fatales in a way. Well, I mean, all of them actually could be saviors more than femme yep. fatales. And that's actually, if I have one qualm, I think the movie is one minute too long. 
<laughs> one minute to know. That's, that's just, very precise. That's my, well, uh, uh, <laughs> in, in rough sketches, but I, I, right. I think you know what I'm saying. We don't want to spoil anything, but if it had just cut off the last minute, uh -huh. there, there mm -hmm. would have been an added gravitas that you normally expect with a film noir as yeah. opposed but to... I mean, uh, you know, it's the Hollywood, the Hays Code and all that kind of stuff, yeah. you know. I, so that extra minute had to be there. And another thing I want to say in terms of style that I found really interesting, for the most part of the film, very few shots, shot counter shots. Did you notice? Yeah, right. Sort of very static. Very few, except yeah. when he fights with the wife. Uh huh. I think it's a matter of you know creating an environment where everything is tied, everyone is tied to each other, basically. Yep. Until you know something happens and he finds himself alone, yep. basically. Yep. And I found that a very nice stylistic touch. Yeah. Very claustrophobic, too, for the most part. And, and also, we should mention a screenplay by um, Jules uh, Firthman, who worked on The Big Sleep and uh, To Have and Have Not. Mm -hmm. And it was from a book of the same name published a year earlier mm -hmm. by William Lindsay Gresham, a very interesting person who was obviously fascinated with uh, freak shows, carnivals, and I guess uh, and when he was younger, he was fascinated with Coney Island. And um, this, this is a movie that definitely puts alcoholism front and center mm -hmm. uh, in every which way. And the fact that William Lindsay Gresham was an alcoholic himself mm -hmm. and ended up uh, dabbling with a lot of things, um, Christianity, Zen Buddhism, um, Scientology, uh, and, and yet still never quite recovered, I think, from the fact that uh, Nightmare Alley was his most successful book mm -hmm. and um, ended up uh, committing suicide in, um, I think it was 1962 when he was 51, mm -hmm. uh, taking an overdose of sleeping pills. Um, and that tragedy, you almost see it, it's, it's, it's there in this film. It's yeah. almost as if though he could see his own future Mm -hmm. And he just made, a, uh, he gave it a backdrop. And in, in, for that reason, I think this movie is actually very, uh, there's something very uh, personal about it. And, and it was also, the person who really made it happen was the, uh, the main star, Tyrone Power. Mm -hmm. uh, he's the one who fought for it and got the studio behind it to make it happen. Um, but so you've got incredible visuals, you've got some very interesting dialogue, and if you like carnivals, not something to miss. And, uh, and speaking of the dialogue, I, are you a real woman? Do you have a heart as big as an artichoke no. with a leaf for every man? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a fake woman, sorry. Uh, well, what can you do? Yeah, so much, perfect. so much to unpack though, so much to unpa unpack in this yeah. movie. Uh, hopefully people will get a chance to check out Nightmare Alley. If you're here in Boulder and uh, you happen mm -hmm. to uh, get the International Film Series schedule, definitely uh, check it out. And uh, otherwise, of course, you can look forward to seeing Guillermo del Toro's remake, which is coming out soon. Yeah, but it's really worth seeing this version. I think it's a yeah. beautiful film, a beautiful print that's going to screen here at IFS. Yep. Um, I, I, you can really see why Del Toro would want to remake Absolutely. this film. Absolutely, 100%. But in order to see that, you need to see this film. So come to IFS. Thanks for joining us, and we hope to see you at the movies. Bye.